Hi, this is Jamie. And this is Brian. Welcome to the podcast for an Oregon cottage. Where we talk about the food we love, the projects we're working on, things that went great, and things that didn't go so well. In other words, simple homemade life. Welcome to episode 61 of an Oregon cottage podcast. And um, if you were listening to this on our usual podcast feed, you're probably thinking, well, this sounds kind of funny. Well, it does sound funny because we're recording this as a video in the living room of our 100-year-old farmhouse. If you're watching this as a video, it's obvious this is a video. Keep watching. But if you're listening on the podcast, it's fine. Keep listening. It, this is going to work as an audio-only thing. But if you want to see everything that we're going to show, you can come over to YouTube and take a look at our uh, an Oregon Cottage YouTube channel. That's right. So this is the Farmhouse Summer Recap. So we took a few months off from the podcast and we thought we would take this episode to bring you up to speed on the things that have been happening um, with the farmhouse and also the garden. That's right. And as you can see, the farmhouse is completely done. Ha 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 ha. It's not. That was <laughs> we just wish. a bad joke, right? People keep asking us, when, when are you going to move in? Well, right behind us um, is one of the walls in the living room and we've gotten most of the sheetrock off and we knew there was wood underneath we were hoping it would be shiplap but what was it just random pieces of wood nailed in haphazard ways and doorways covered and lots of holes and it wasn't just three different kinds of wood so anyway we will have to yeah. cover that up with our own shiplap it's not i mean i even like imperfect and rough but it's not <laughs> even no it's a little too imperfect so we will have to go with plan b and that would be um, putting up some sort of uh, wall paneled wall treatment of our own over the top of this. So, yeah. so what else? What else have we been working on in the summer on this place? Well, <clears throat> we've been um, kind of generally just checking off. We have a long permit process here where we live in uh, Western Oregon, so we have permits that we have to pass. And you know, it's not super easy for us because we're not contractors. So um, I think third time was the charm on our last permit, but we did pass it. So checking those things off is a little bit slow, but um, we are also been working on the garden because we wanted vegetables this year. So that kind of took priority um, in order to get that in. And so we did that and then we just kind of had fun too. We, we did some things with our daughter. We went a couple places. I mean, we lived life too. So we didn't work day and night on the farmhouse. Yeah, and so just really quick, either if you've forgotten, which I don't blame you, or you just, you know, <laughs> what on earth are these people talking about? We, we have a 100-year-old farmhouse uh, in the Willamette Valley in Oregon. We added, we thought it was pretty simple, eight feet to the back of it to make the master bedroom usable. And it, it just involves a lot more. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's going, but well, it's we been going slowly. Yeah, that was major. We added a foundation under the house first, then we added eight feet. And then it's just been, just been kind of jumping through the hoops and getting all these little things tied up as far as framing and um, underfloor and rough plumbing and rough electrical. And I'm learning a ton. And so um, we're right up to where we're going to just, we're going to pass. Um, Insulation. insulation. I have this great yes. feeling. I just yeah. need to do a little more thing and then then we're really ready for sheetrock. So that's kind of where that is. Um, so specifically, um, the permits that we passed over the summer have been what? Uh, let's see. Well, we passed the final on the underfloor, which was interesting. That's kind of like a step up from the foundation. So they want to know that the structure holding up the floor is good. And then uh, rough plumbing is, we had a plumber come in and do that. I think we, we talked about that. Mm -hmm. um, just getting the main lines and then I can kind of take it from there. Rough, electri uh, rough, rough electrical, I did myself. And again, electrical is really simple. You just have to think it through, pull a lot of wire. And so um, it took you know, it took two trips for the for the inspector yeah. on that one, but he was really nice. We, we seem to have really nice inspectors that have been kind of helping me out. That so, is good. Yeah, so basically we're, then the framing was the one that, um, just because we're sticking a new part onto an old house. And so we seem to incur all this stuff where we have to bring kind of part of the house back up. Well, framing also means um, they look at the roof, they look at That's the, true. you know, we had to add vents. We, you know, there's all these things we don't think about. We're like, well, it's framed. And then they have this checklist of things that you did forget about. <laughs> you need a vent, you need something, you need a whole, anyway, it was the, so it's we've we've gotten um, that done, but yeah. now we're going to open a whole new can of worms. Let's talk talk about the kitchen. 
What's the, what's oh, the well, next? So kind of we're, just can't leave well enough when we have, we've got the insulation done, which you can see here, it's almost all the walls are done. That means when they come and okay that, we can put walls up. And for me, that means it's gonna start looking like an actual place, which makes me wanna start thinking about the next thing, which is the kitchen, because we also have to get some of that permitted because we're going to take out a load-bearing wall, not the complete wall, but open it up. So we have to add some special engineering and stuff for that. So we, that's kind of our biggest thing. We have to get that plan and we have to get that um, added onto the permit. Yeah, so anyway, we, we're, we're kind of tearing things apart. We've tore some new holes in the ceiling to kind of see what's there. We need to tear off some more. Yeah, and you can so see can, yeah. here exactly where around the sink will be. The sink will stay where it is. It'll just be on an island now. And then all the area around it, that wall will come down and that will be the new kitchen area. So, and then the other thing that's been really keeping us busy, like this morning I was out checking gopher traps because we've just got, it's been, and Jamie's kind of talked about it on the blog and on the podcast, we, we just have every kind of critter you can imagine. In fact, we had a mountain lion come through during the summer. Well, couple, we didn't. Couple, we, we didn't. No. We didn't see it. I don't know where we were, but the neighbors were like, did you see the mountain lion that went through? Anyway, so we have... We have gophers and we have We've ground squirrels. We've talked about the gophers many times, you know that. But we are, the, the good news this summer is that we have started, we found something that really works and we've started to win the war with the gophers, we Oh think. man, yeah. But the other amazing thing is what other animal has been. Well, yeah, so, so this morning I'm like really excited because these gophers have been hard to trap and I'm gonna do a whole nother video on all the ways that don't work that I've tried. <laughs> I've tried so many ways to get them. So this morning I'm like, hey, where's my trap? Um, it's gone from this hole that I had big rocks holding it down and the trap had been yanked out and fortunately about 30 feet away was only part of the gopher. And so um, I know from a trail cam that we've been getting coyotes that come in and this has happened. I've lost a couple traps this way. Yes. They come in and they're like, oh, free gopher, fresh gopher kill. <laughs> and they dig them up and I've had to tie the traps to big things because the coyotes will run off with the trap. Um, you lose the trap. And I'm, you know what? I'm. It's crazy. I'm, ha I'm happy for them to eat it. But I think it's crazy I and I just kind of always thought that they didn't want already dead stuff. Like that's more vulture carry-on. I didn't really think that that coyotes did that. But we we actually, he thinks that he actually dug up, you know, when we kill him, we put him back down in the hole thinking that they'll, you know, that'll discourage other ones from coming, which so far has not happened. <laughs> but they actually dug up a dead gopher. like. Isn't it was weird? gone. One of the little graves was desecrated this morning. It was just like, wait a minute, I, I, I stuffed the, I stuffed my kill in there and put dirt on it. Anyway, it's funny. Yeah. And then oh we, goodness. then we have a mole. Don't even get me started on this mole who's driving me nuts. Um, and and you know, we're not just complaining about them. They really make it so that we can't do the stuff. So we can't seed the grass and and get the lawn in shape. We can't make my garden in the sunken garden area. Um, because the moles are coming up and destroying everything. So we really have to get it under control before we can proceed. So that's why it's kind of a big deal. Yeah, anyway, so it's, it feels good. We're, we're winning, the, the tide is turning. Yeah. So, but anyway, a good thing for, um, because we've been able to trap so many uh, ground squirrels is the garden is finally able to produce. And so we've actually been eating some things out yes. of the garden. That's kind of exciting. Yes, we have, we have thwarted the ground squirrels <laughs> and we have been able to to definitely get some good stuff from the garden this year, which is a big deal. I mean, so we have the, the deer fence, and last year it was the deer really that kept oh us from gosh. eating anything. Um, the ground squirrels ate a little bit, but the deer ate the tomatoes and everything down before it could even produce. So um, this year we've got green beans. Oh man, they're and so good. What are, you do, what are you doing with the green beans? Well, I put them on a salad. Oh, no. I, uh, I grilled them. Yes. Oh my gosh, you can just grill. Green beans grilled are so good. Yeah, he's Get really the good at basket grilling. Basket thing and do it. Yeah. <laughs> right, and um, in fact, I have a, a post on the blog that shows you grilling them in that basket. So it's a great way to do it, and oh, they're so good that way. Ooh, and if you, we've been harvesting onions too. Surprisingly, the ground squirrels did not want onions, <laughs> and uh, so if you slice those in there with some garlic, mm, it's very good. That's very good. We've been enjoying that. And then the other thing we've been uh, able to harvest from the garden are lots of tomatoes. So finally, oh, I'm yeah. able to start making the chutney, 
um, the salsa, the marinara, that roasted marinara. In fact, I have it cooking in the oven right now. I some of the roasted marinara and it smells <laughs> it heavenly. Smell good. The house smells like garlic. <laughs> well, not tomatoes. this house. Yeah. We don't have an oven not in this, this house. house yeah. But the other one that we're living in has um, really good smells going on now. So yeah, the garden, um, I'm going to link in the show notes to the, the garden tour year one. We're like halfway done with it. We have to do one more section of the um, really easy DIY watering system, which has worked out really well. And um, we have to then finish laying all the cardboard and the last beds that need to be made. So we have a few more things to do, but take a look at that garden tour because um, I, I think it's turning out really well. It's really turning into a yeah. nice low maintenance um, garden area that's producing for us. So it's really great. It's one, And that video is, uh, it's in our channel there. It's one of the latest garden videos. So you'll yeah. see it there. It's really cool. And you can see that stone, I don't know what you call a stone circle of raised bed. raised stone. Yeah. yeah, it's been I don't know. I call it a, I call it a rock it. wall raised bed. But they yeah, they love it on Instagram. Yeah, it's just Insta like the greatest, it's very popular. On great Instagram. when you have because we have so many rocks here. <laughs> I just thought it was the most creative use of all the rocks. Yeah, and together. in fact, if you've been a long time listener of the podcast, you know we talked about that when we had to dig out um, for the foundation. We had to rent a machinery, and it wasn't just rocks; it was boulders, huge giant boulders. So yeah, we have a lot here. It's time for... This is really cool. So I really like coffee. I like making it all different ways. And we have uh, we have videos on how you make uh, lattes and macchiatos. And what do we decide that's called that I'm making with the espresso machine? The home it's, espresso machine. It's a macchiato latte. Yeah, I make those. I love Keurig. I use that. I love French press. I just, I love those vacuum things. It's just, I think it's fun to make coffee all different ways. Well, for Christmas, I was given this thing that, you know, only me and 10 million other Americans are using, and it's called an AeroPress. And as you can see, it, it sort of looks like a um, science lab equipment. Yeah. It really does. It's like got this big plastic plunger. And basically, it's kind of a cross between a, a drip and a French press, I suppose. And what's yeah. good about it is, the, I mean, who cares how it works, but what's really good about it is you can make really strong, really mellow coffee because at the end, you, you force the water through at the end. And so you get really hot coffee and it hasn't over gotten too much acid out of the grounds. And so it's, it's really simple to use. You, you put the coffee in, um, there's a little paper filter in the bottom of it. And in fact, you can use these paper filters over and over and over. The, the inventor of it said he used one 87 times, even though they, they give you a little stack of them when you buy it. And then you um, got your grounds in there, you pour your hot water in you know, with your cup underneath, and then you, you just stir that, then you add a little bit more water depending on how much you're gonna make, and then the, the arrow part is this plunger that you push down, and it's like a syringe. Hmm. And you push it down and it forces the water through. And so, anyway, we have, we'll have a, a link to that. They and have it makes on just Amazon. one cup at a time. It makes like, yeah, I guess two cups, two small cups. It doesn't make a huge amount. You can't really make a pot. So it's great for individual, just really fresh, really hot coffee. And weren't you thinking it would be good to take with us places? Oh yeah, that's so true. And easy to pack. Well, I actually haven't taken it with us traveling and I'm like, ah, oh, I should be taking that thing because it's, it's really small and light. Yeah. So, all right, next time I'm taking it. That's done. <laughs> Well, something that um, I had to think about over the last couple of months that I thought was really cool is actually a place. And it's been my favorite little town on the Oregon coast for a number of years, but we were able to visit it again this last summer in July, and we hadn't been there for, oh, years. I think we hadn't been there since the kids were um, smaller. And it reminded me again of why I like it. And it's Pacific City, and it's on the coast of Oregon, um, probably, 30 minutes north of Lincoln City, which is a, a bigger city on the coast. And you have to drive off of the highway to get to it, which is one of its charms because it's a, not right on the highway. And then um, there's just, it's very quaint, small. There's tons of things to do. They, they have a long, long beach that is um, mostly um, a national park or something. So there's no houses on it, which is unusual along the coast. So you could walk along this beach and it's just beach grass and it's very um, nice. They have a giant dune. And most of the dunes in Oregon are down um, south of um, 
Lincoln City down Florence area and stuff, but this is one giant dune and you could you could climb up it. I mean, it's giant. How, how many feet? I don't know, it might be 800. Um, it's it's really, you could surf down it. It's that Oh yeah, and, they, and the kids cardboard. Do, they love yeah. it. They just love yeah. going up it. And the views from up there are wonderful. And then it's fun to run down or surf down or whatever you want. There's a giant haystack rock, which there are like millions of them, <laughs> it seems like. This is a big one. Ago. It's Their but haystack it's rock is really, really big. In the mornings, they have what they call the dory fleet that they, it goes out and these are certain types of boats and they're fisher they're, uh -huh, they fish. they're fishing boats they're fishing boats but they go out from the sand and then they come back in on the sand like there's no dock there's no they just like the guys like with a pickup a guy will bring his boat down on a trailer mm -hmm. dump it off yeah in the ocean yeah and then so yeah they kind of trailer them down and it's just Super early they go out. Yeah. I don't think we're up that early, but, but we, usually we see, see them come back. Come back. <laughs> and they, they have to, you know, do their horns so that people will get out of the way. And it's just kind of fun. And it's one of the few places where you can drive down onto the beach. Um, there's, uh, there's some places, there's like a, what's the place right there? Like a, oh, a pub, a brew pub that's yeah, there. I forget the name and of I it. think they yeah. even have sand volleyball. Like the brew pub is like on the beach. Yeah. Like it sticks out into the sand. And it's it's really amazing that they would they would let them build it there. I mean, it looks like a California. Yeah. It's like you'd use it in a movie, like a movie set. Yeah, it's really quite different from any other town that we've experienced on on the Oregon coast. And there's just lots of things to do, and it's good surfing. And that's it's why very we mellow. went. Yeah, He's, little waves. He went surfing with <laughs> our daughter, surfing. and um, there were a number. There's a, quite a few surfers yeah. who come there. It, yeah. There's a lot of them. So Pacific City, if you're anywhere, if you're planning a trip to Oregon or you live around and you haven't been to Pacific City, it's really cool and you should make a, make a trip there and go. And they have a really good coffee place. I have to throw that in. Yes. Because when you're done discussed. surfing and you're really cold, you got to go get a hot coffee. So Coffee's yeah, important. Pacific City is great. Yeah. Well, that's all the time uh, we have for this segment. And so be sure to join us next time. It's going to be um, back on our regular podcast audio only and we're going to continue going with the projects on the house and other things we're dealing with and more food and, and yeah. fun things if you have any questions or ideas or just thoughts about the house we would love to uh, have you leave them in the comments um, any other ideas um, we have a phone number you could leave a voicemail at do you have do you know that no it's, I don't have that memorized but it is in the show notes so if you go it's to right there I wrote it oh right there. Oh my goodness, you wrote it right there. Okay, well, let me read that. 541-658-0215. Yeah, and we won't answer the phone. It's, vo no. it's voicemail only. So, But anyway, thank you so much for watching and for listening, and we will be talking to you again soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to an Oregon Cottage podcast. All show notes are available at anoregoncottage.com slash podcast. Oh, hey, I think the jazz hands should be the outtake. That's it.